Okay, I'm going to take a movie of the truck. It's restored. It's a 1952 Chevy 3100 pickup. And I'm taking a movie because um, it's time to sell the truck. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of features of the truck. And uh, so it has been restored. And it has it is a resto mod. Uh, what is a resto mod? Well, a resto mod is a truck that was restored, but modifications were made to the truck. Why? Simple. These trucks back in 1952 were very, very utilitarian. They had one purpose, haul crap, and they drove like crap. They were tanks. They were three on the tree, uh, six cylinders, single carburetor. Um, so they didn't have that get up and go, especially with today's driving. If you get anywhere near the city, you need to have some pep behind you. Um, they couldn't stop. They were disc brakes. They rode like tanks. They swayed all over the place. The suspension wasn't that great. So modifications are almost critical in a truck. It's the only version of a truck that is actually worth more if it's modified than if it's left all original. Because if it's left all original, what you got is a truck that can't stop, can't go, has no air conditioning. If you ever got in a city, you die. I mean, you, you just pretty much open the flaps. So this truck, I'm going to go through some of the modifications of the truck. Yeah, it is a two-tone silver and gray, as you can see. Um, now, originally the gas tank would have come in here, but it's been relocated to the back. Uh, there is a stainless steel gas tank underneath, and uh, so your filler cap is right here. The chrome filler cap is re it was relocated from here. Why? It looks better. Also, a little bit more weight to the back, so uh, a little bit more traction. The uh, wheels replaced with Chevrolet logoed aluminum wheels, which is because it is a Chevy truck. The tires are... Uh, most new condition. So we're going to walk around the truck a little bit. It is now equipped with a radio. It did not have a radio. It now does. It's an AM FM Alpine. I'll show you that in a few minutes. And uh, see if I can go around and make some other, see about some other changes. Uh, originally, and this is all about taste sometimes, what people may or may not want. Originally the grill was chrome. It is now a blue and gray to match the truck. Uh, also the bumper was chrome. Uh, this is a gray with the blue to match the truck. So again, it's just kind of a, a question of taste and what people might like or what some people do like. It's just a matter of that. Uh, it is, does have a dual exhaust. I'm going to get to that engine in a second because it's very special. You know what, but at first I think I'll do the inside. Let's take a look inside and see about the comfort modifications. Comfort modifications. What do we have? Well, we have new gauges. They all work since the restoration. It has uh, 2,900 miles since it was restored. Uh, originally, the key was located here, but this is a newer steering column, and now the key is located in the steering column. So, what I did was I put in an additional uh, cigar lighter, cigarette lighter. I did put in a new console, came out of a pickup truck. Uh, it was a Chevy Colorado, can't remember, but I'm not sure, but uh, the seats came out of a truck that was newer. They, they are quite comfortable. Uh, and this seat here is an electric seat. So they are, the driver's side is electric. The passenger side is manual. And you can see uh, the top of the truck is all redone. Everything inside is redone. Uh, a nice Alpine radio here. Uh, with Pioneer speakers and of course air conditioning was added so here's your air conditioning unit and all your other gauges of course directionals high beams and again everything works as it should so uh, horn this is a Chevy steering wheel off a Chevy truck the other steering wheels because they did not have power steering they were just standard steering and they were had to be bigger because they, you had to really work these things. These things were tough to drive without power steering. Now power steering, the steering wheel can now be smaller and you can almost, you can do this because the engine is doing some of the work. So added the automatic transmission. It's now an automatic. Your parking brake is located here. And uh, let's go see what's under the hood. As a matter of fact, if you want to come around, Susie, take a picture of the door panels. from the driver's side and seat belts were added for safety of course 
Uh, no shoulder belts, too difficult to put in with the five window. This is a five window Chevy. They came with a single window, but this takes out that blind spot that a lot of times you get. So that was well, that was a kind of a special thing to get a five window. Really nice to have a five window, a little bit more collectible, a little bit more desirable. Now I'm going to show you the modifications under the hood. Well, the six cylinder is long gone. And what's replaced it is this beauty. It is a 350. It has aluminum intake, aluminum headers, into a stainless steel exhaust. This is and was a frame off restoration. The frame is powder coat painted. And that is a Holly high rise double fueled carburetor. Edelbrock air cleaner. Need a 716, not to tighten that down. Uh, a lot of parts chromed, obviously. Fan blade alternator and of course here is your here is your compressor for your air conditioner and parts chromed and you can see everything has a place these are all properly installed these wires are all properly installed it is a very clean clean engine compartment as you can tell it's a, a good restoration this is not an amateur restoration by any stretch. And you can tell it was taken apart, taken off, because everything is painted all clean down inside. You can see right down in there. And of course, all your hoses are Goodyear hoses. They're quality. No junk hoses here. Uh, this was quality stuff. Well, I'd say that's it for the most part. The bed, well, let's talk about the bed for a second. Let me get my... Boston Red Sox hat out. Boston Red Sox, of course, were world champions this year. Inside the bed is a diamond plate it's a bed, uh, all in good condition, of course. Originally, it would have came with wooden slats, and it would have came with these metal strips. And this can easily be put back to its original. Uh, there is a lot more with the wooden strips and the rather diamond plate. Uh, that could be done for just a few hundred bucks and uh, probably about six to eight hours worth of labor. Uh, the, the, body, the body just unbolts, unscrews, you can put that down or you can leave it just the way it is. Again, a lot of times it's just a matter of taste. It's what people might like and a lot of times when these trucks go together or any car for that matter, your wallet will dictate what you can probably do and sometimes what you can tolerate. Some people want a 100 point truck. Well, for that you need your wallet, your checkbook, and probably all your CDs cashed in, and your mutual funds will be gone. Uh, to take it to a level of, say, 95 to 97, thousands less. But still a good truck, and you have to ask yourself, do I want something I want to drive? Well, a lot of people say, I want to drive it. If you want to drive it, you probably don't want to get it to 100 points, because you're not going to want to drive it. Uh, most, most vehicles actually get damaged in the garage. Something falls off a shelf, a broomstick falls over, and hits it, scratches it. When you get a 100-point car, you'll have a really bad gut feeling inside if something happens to it. If it's a 95 to 97 points, you're driving it, you're enjoying it, cruise night's outstanding, it's awesome. And this, on a scale of 1 to 10, for a cruise night vehicle, it's clearly a 10. Uh, and if somebody wanted to take it to 100 points, they could with not a whole lot of money be putting some money into it, but not a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get down underneath this vehicle because I'm going to have Susie hand me that camera when I climb down. And we're going to get a little view at the bottom of it. Oh, and a, uh, a, a third brake light was added here. And if you keep that up, dog, you're going to be for sale too. Let me kiss. Yeah, you're going to be for sale. Come on. So, uh, <laughs> so let me see if I can... Have Susie give me that. Again, there's your stainless steel tank. And your filler cap to your stainless steel tank. And let's see if I can climb way under there. Uh, there's your exhaust system. And you can see that truck is just as clean as a whistle underneath as it is on top. Oh, let, me, let me see if I can... I don't think it's bright enough, but if I can get underneath those wheel wells, 
No, it's not bright enough. But underneath there, those wheel wells, if the sun was out, you could see it's extremely clean. Wires, everything in their place. That's the bottom of the bed of the truck. Completely clean. All the way through and through. All the way down. Absolutely perfect. I wish it were a little bit brighter. You'd probably get a better vision. But it is dual exhaust. It is stainless steel. And uh, there's a cross member down there. But everything's beautiful. Alright, well you kind of got a little bit of an idea. Wish the sun was out. You get a better one. But it gives you an idea that underneath the truck it was a ground, like I said, off ground off frame off restoration. And it's time for somebody else to enjoy it. The price for the truck will be set probably uh, twenty-nine thousand nine hundred, which I think is an extremely fair price for a truck of this quality build and this condition. You could literally drive this truck anywhere. You could take it all the way to Texas and back. And right now the truck's in Florida. Uh, but you could literally drive this truck anywhere. Stops on a dime, takes off the engine, probably pushing somewhere between 400 and 450 horsepower. It was done out of uh, Joaquin, uh, Washington, crated, shipped, connected to the transmission and installed in the truck. So it was a machine shop that built the engine. And uh, I do have the gentleman's name who built it. And he did it. It was installed. So with that, the truck is for sale at $29,900, and I'll probably be listing it sometime either this week or next week. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to call me.